This is a special cut down episode of Photo Walkthrough episode number 123. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the brand new features in Photoshop CS5, the new HDR Pro feature, to see how well it performs and see if it's really worth upgrading to Photoshop CS5 for. If you'd like to see the full episode, please head on over to photowalkthrough.com and look for episode number 123. Okay, enjoy the show. Here we are in the Photoshop CS5 Merge to HDR Pro window, which um, has got the same four basic uh, uh, Merge to HDR options that we have in Photoshop CS4. So we've got Local Adaptation, Equalize Histogram, um, we've got, which still has no other options. We've got, still got the Exposure in Gamma, which has only got the two options. Um, and we've still got a highlight compression, which has still got no options. All of the new features in HDR Pro uh, are in the local adaptation uh, section. Um, and uh, it is, without doubt, the best of the HDR um, toning options we've got available in, in, in Photoshop. Um, so let's just have a quick run through the settings. Now, um, the gamma and uh, exposure settings here... Um, are very much like the exposure in Gamma. Um, if you've played with this much in previous versions of Photoshop, you'll find that uh, exposure does exactly what you'd expect. It changes the exposure of the image. Uh, and as you can see, it does allow you to, to blow out those sections up, up in the sky there. Um, and Gamma, what Gamma does, you may never have quite understood what Gamma did. Uh, what Gamma does is it changes the difference between the highlights and the shadows. So um, if you drag the Gamma to the right, you're compressing all of the tones in the image so that the darker tones are closer to the lighter tones. Um, and then, having done that, then you can use your exposure to, um, to tweak how you want the overall image to look. Now, that's... Um, much as it always has been, and you'll find the same settings under local adaptation. We've still got a gamma and exposure slider here, so there is some there is some sort of continuity between how some of these settings work. Now, before I go through um, all of these uh, sliders, and I'll, I'll quickly run through what they do. Um, we've also got uh, right at the top here some presets. Um, so, of course, by default, we come in with a default preset, and that's the one that you can see here. We've got a flat preset, which just uh, uh, is is uh, even less uh, settings applied to it. Um, but then we've got a whole bunch of um, uh, surrealistic, saturated, photorealistic, monochrome, and more saturated. Um, so, let's just have a quick look at saturated. Uh, and you can see it's a similar sort of thing, but it's pushing the saturation right up. We've got vibrance and saturation sliders down here at the bottom. Let's have a look at photorealistic, see what that's doing. Um, again, similar to the basic, but you can see we've, we've started to get a little bit of crunchiness in the sky here. What, what's actually happening is that they've pushed the detail slider up a little, and that's starting to give us a little bit of haloing here, uh, which, of course, is to be expected, because what the HDR um, uh, settings are doing here is identifying the sky as being one load of, uh, uh, of, of information at one end of the, um, the tonal range, and the ground, which is much darker, at the other end of the tonal range. So there's got to be a transition between the ground and the sky of some sort so that it can try and get those tones closer together. Um, and it just in this case, the detail and the radius sliders are get, making it so that that halo is a little bit visible there. Um, we can either uh, emphasize that, if that's a, a, a style you like, or we can de-emphasize it by changing some of these sliders. But for the time being, I'm just going to mo mo motor on with the, um, with the presets. Um, if you want to go um, really for that wild... Uh, HDR style, um, you know, the totally unrealistic looking HDR style that, that maybe has a, a sort of a surrealistic look that you, that you like. Um, we've got those settings here in uh, in Photoshop CS5 as well. Um, and we've got a couple of different versions of those. We've got a high contrast version, which uh, looks like that. And we've got a low contrast version, which looks like that, that. Now, this is something I don't believe I've seen other... Uh, HDR um, conversion programs do. What it's actually done here is uh, taken the detail slider and dragged it to the left, which, as you can see, gives us a negative value and does, um, whereas a detail slider would normally give us a local contrast enhancement, um, if you drag it down below zero, it gives us a sort of a, a Vaseline on the lens misty look. 
Um, so it's sort of defocusing a little bit. It's the opposite of detail. It's 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 blur. Um, so if you drag that all the way down, you get some very very strange effects. Um, not necessarily attractive in this case, but um, maybe useful in other circumstances. Uh, and finally, we've got a, a little hidden back here. We've also got a curve. Now, this is actually um, extremely useful because it allows you, uh, as part of the HDR, pro the HDR process, um, just to um, do that final step of just giving your image a little bit of pop. So, okay, just to vary things a little bit, here's another image that we're going to uh, have a quick bash at with the um, with the Merge to HDR Pro. This is uh, just taken in my back garden, and as you can see, it was a bright sunny day, and we've got the shadow of the house. I figured that would test things a little bit, um, and as you can see, I took uh, seven different exposures here, uh, from minus three to plus three. Um, so I figured let's just uh, have a quick go at this, see, see what we can do with it. Um, First thing I want to show you is there's uh, another new feature here, the Remove Ghosts option. Um, so if I was just to zoom in, uh, this is going to show you one of the features that actually I think is a little bit lacking here. The uh, um, These these zoom options uh, are a little bit limited. Now I can hold down the spacebar and drag around, but um, it, it's it's a little bit clunky, this zoom window here. Now you can see we've got a lot of ghosting in the, in the tree, so let's just try that Remove Ghosts option and see how it does. Give it a second just to figure out which is the best exposure to use. And there you go. You can see it's done actually an excellent job of choosing uh, one exposure for those bits that needed to uh, needed to be de-ghosted. Um, so I'd just like to wrap up and just say how do I think this compares with what is probably the main uh, competitor, which is uh, Photomatics, which is the, the HDR um, software of choice for most people. Um, I have to say, I think we've got very much the same sorts of controls. There are extra sliders in Photomatics. If you're a real uh, Photomatics power user, then you're not going to find quite the level of control that you are used to here in Photoshop. But for the vast majority of us, I think all of the main things that you can do in Photomatics, you can also do here in Photoshop CS5. Um, and actually, probably a little bit more easy to understand what the sliders are doing as well. Photomatics is, is a bit arcane. It really needs a little bit of an update just to just to make it that little bit more useful. Um, and I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, HDR Software will regard this as as a real spur to make them uh, work on their own product as well. Uh, but for the time being, I think Photoshop has caught up in a lot of ways with what Photomatics does. Um, I think Photomatic still gives slightly cleaner results. I found that um, when you push it to the extremes, Photoshop sends, tends to, uh, the colors tend to start to go a bit wild before they would in Photomatics. And also when it comes to uh, working with that edge glow and the detail slider in particular, things can sometimes around those halo areas get a little bit crunchy, a little bit pixelated in Photoshop before they would in Photomatics. So, um, Photomatic's probably still a slightly superior tool, but is Photoshop um, a, a useful and usable HDR product now? Absolutely, yes. It's extremely good um, and uh, a big, big improvement over Photoshop CS4. Is it going to stop you using Photomatic's if, you, if that's what you've tended to use? Probably not. Um, so another useful tool to go in your kit bag if you haven't already got a better tool on your hard disk. Um, okay, that's uh, that's us done for today. Um, I will see you in the next show where we're going to talk about another Photoshop CS5 tool and see whether or not that one's worth upgrading for. See you then. This video was an extract from Photo Walkthrough, an online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you'd like to see more, you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.